everybody, it's Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, it's all about the glorious Jensen Interceptor. This is a Mark III, and there's been a lot of love for this in previous episodes where people have seen it in the background, and a lot of people saying in the comments, oh, please do an episode or a series on that build. Well, we're here for you guys at the end of the day, so this is the first episode of the Jensen Interceptor build. And as you'd expect, stage one, drop the dirty, smelly stuff out. Now, before the guys stripped all the dirty, smelly stuff out, we had to get a datum point for how much the car actually weighed, which was 1,670 kilos, which was actually quite surprising because I was expecting it to be around about 1,800 kilos, which I think is what the books normally say these cars weigh. But nevertheless, the scales don't lie to all you ladies out there that told me otherwise. Uh, 1,670 kilos is how much the car actually weighed. And we also did a front to back corner weight um, as well. And it comes out to be 51 to 49. So fairly close to 50, 50 weight distribution. So that's our starting point. And the guys yesterday stripped all the stuff out. So we have the glory job today of weighing it all. So let's get the scales out and start weighing it all. Now, before I get into actually weighing everything, um, I should explain why we are weighing things. Because uh, apart from the fact that there's a preconceived uh, ideas out there that you know when we do a conversion it ends up being much heavier than the original car when it was petrol or diesel which is simply not true um, and it's not true for a number of reasons we we aim to keep these conversions the same uh, weight because that's the weight that the car was designed to carry but equally legally uh, you can't make a, a one-ton vehicle two tons because it'll go over the gross vehicle weight as well. So we have to know what the original um, weight of the vehicle is. And with all the components removed, we can then figure out what that weight is so that we can figure out how much weight we're going to put back on with the batteries and motors. Because we've got a, you know, an idea of what we're going to put in this car and we can calculate that weight based off other conversions and other conversion kits that we've done. But until we know how much weight has come off, we won't know whether or not that's too much weight or maybe not enough weight. I don't know. Which, when I say not enough weight, that means that then we can maybe make the battery pack bigger and the range bigger. So, without further ado, let's start measuring kilograms. Um, and to do that, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to zero the scales for the pallet. Because essentially, um, you don't need to be weighing things including the pallet. So I'm just going to zero it here now. Okay, that's zeroed. So now we can start loading things on. Now we've got it on the pallet. It was definitely a heavy old lump because I could feel that on the engine hoist. Uh, I should say that all the fluids are out, so um, the gearbox oil and the engine oil is all removed. Um, now, this is a 7.2 litre, was it, Tim? Yeah, 7.2. 7.2 litre Chrysler engine in the Mark III uh, interceptors on a um, three-speed auto box. Um, so, not a light engine, and uh, you've got a few moments to guess how much you think this weighs because I'm going to walk over here and tell you. So have a, have a number in your head in kilos as to how much you think this weighs and see if you are close to 393.5 kilos. Wow. That's heavy. That is heavy. Right. So 393.5 kilos. Let's write that on the board. Right. So 393.5. Uh, next, we've got exhaust, radiators, and all the other bits. We'll see if we can get all those probably on uh, one pallet, just to make the video a little bit shorter. So, that's next. Right, there we go. That is a mountain of guff right there. Topped off with an air filter. So, what have we got? We've got uh, the exhaust, we've got the fuel tank, loads of pipe work, 12-volt um, battery, and you're probably wondering why you're wearing a 12-volt battery. Well, we don't need a big, massive 12-volt battery because we're not cranking over an engine to start it. So the 12-volt battery that goes on the uh, electric conversion is literally half a kilo, and it's just there literally to run um, things like windscreen wipers and lights and closer contactors when you're firing it up. So that's why the big, heavy, lead-acid 12-volt battery is on there. We've got a shifter there as well, and just... Uh, fuel pumps, all sorts of stuff. There's still more to go, but 
you know, we can't fit it on the pallet anymore. So there you go. This is all uh, on there. Uh, the radiator and the fuel tank is empty, just so you know. So, again, how much do you reckon this weighs before I tell you the numbers? Right, the numbers are 120 kilos. So all that lot, 120 kilos. So back over to the whiteboard and add them on there. Right, so we'll bracket all that together and that was uh, 120 kilos so now uh, oh I just thought of another one spare wheel we ain't gonna need the spare wheel either because uh, we're gonna use that space for the rear battery pack so spare wheel in fact let's measure the spare wheel and then we come back to fluids and fuel spare wheel next last one for the scales spare wheel that ain't light Right, what have we got there? 20 kilos. Right, off to the whiteboard again. 20 kilos. Right, so that's 20 kilos for the spare wheel. Uh, now, fuel tank capacity on a Mark III is uh, 90 uh, litres. I think it's 91 litres actually. So, what's that? So, 90. Uh, 91 times uh, petrol is 0 0.79 uh, per litre. So that is 72 kilos for full tank of fuel. Uh, so 72 there. Fluids, so uh, what have we got? Probably about five litres in the engine, a couple of litres in the gearbox, um, plus coolant. So let's say around about, say, 15 kilos for fluids. Uh, that's probably on the high side actually let's say let's say about 12 12 kilos for fluids right time to add it all up how's your maths you know my maths is rubbish <laughs> <laughs> right let's that's see what, what calculators are for 393.5 plus 120 plus 20 617 so uh, total uh, 617 kilos has come off it. That is more than I thought. You think it was about that? Surprising, isn't it? 617 kilos is almost the weight of a small car. How much did your Lotus weigh? 720 kilos, and that's a whole car with that's wet. So it's nearly the same weight as your Lotus. Yeah. That's yeah. scary. <laughs> but on the good news is... We've got a lot to play with, uh, 617 kilos. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, tally up now as to how much the EV conversion um, should weigh because we're going to use pretty much the same components that we've used in lots of other com uh, conversions of similar sort of like size cars. So I'm going to do a quick tally up of that and see if we're anywhere close to 617 kilos. I doubt it. Right, I've done the calcs, because uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes back on um, uh, for the EV conversion. Obviously, we're going Tesla drive units. So there you go, I've spotted that. But it's a to put Tesla drive unit system, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, chargers, uh, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is what we were planning on this vehicle. Um, battery boxes, cables, pumps, aircon units, coolant system. There's, there's a whole raft of things that um, is planned to go on the Jensen. And we know exactly how much that all weighs because that's exactly the same essentially as the components we put on a lot of other cars and more to the point we ship kits out exactly um, this uh, kit um, internationally so we have to weigh those before they go out so we know exactly all that lot there weighs 590 kilos which is less of what's come off essentially that means we have the capacity to go up a little bit more on the battery pack. So we may go up to, I don't know, 70, 75 kilowatt hours on the battery pack. And that's going to be pretty cool because I have a feeling this is going to end up with the same range as when it was petrol. Because don't forget, when it was petrol with a big old 7.2 litre engine, it was around about, I think it's 12 miles per gallon on the book. But most people I've um, uh, uh, spoken to with Jensen's say it's around about 10 and certainly like single figures when you're on the motorway. So let's go with 10 miles per gallon and with the size of the um, capacity of the uh, tank, which I believe is in old money, it's 
about 20 gallons, that's 200 mile range. Um, so with a bigger battery pack, we've got a good chance of actually getting the same range, uh, would you believe? So there we go. I don't know if you're surprised by that or uh, um, you were expecting that because I think the Jensen is quite renowned to be a heavy car anyway. But yeah, we've ended up pretty much the same way. Well, actually, technically less, but we're going to make up the numbers uh, back up to the same to get a bigger battery pack. So there you go. That hopefully has confirmed to you guys out there that we end up with the same weight as when we started when it was a petrol car. But before we end this video, I want to have a little bit of a chat as to what motor we're going to put in this because it's rather special. Now let's talk about the drive unit because essentially this had a massive 7.2 litre Chrysler engine in which gave it around about I think 300 horsepower, 400 pound foot of torque um, and depending on where you look the numbers online are higher or lower etc but it's around about that. It's a good amount of power I'll give it that because I did take it for a spin and it's got a bit of oomph to it. Nothing like what I'm used to with electric powertrain that's for sure. So what are we going to do to give it um, justice, if you like, going forward with the EV powertrain? Well, we've taken American or 20th, 20th century American muscle out and we're going to put in 21st century American muscle back in with a Tesla drive unit. But as you can probably see, there's a little bit of a problem with that because this is a front engine rear wheel drive car and this usually sits in the rear of a Tesla and drives the rear wheels. So how are we going to turn this into something that can just simply be in line and drive a prop. Well, the solution is a company called Revolt Systems in the US have developed a lovely bit of engineering um, creation, uh, which what they've done is taken the Tesla motor, got a billet aluminium sort of mount there, which then mounts the inverter on, and then off the motor here, they've got an inline gearbox. So essentially, it's all this, but in line, going directly into the prop. So that's the plan for this car because we've got to do it justice. I mean, this back in the day was quite uh, an exclusive car. I mean, it was very expensive back in the day. Oh yeah, I think they were sort of twice the price of the, the equivalent, you know, something like an E-type Jag or whatever. So right. they were very exclusive and they were quite famous for um, being bought by celebrities. So maybe, yes. that's, maybe that's a question for today. Question for you guys out there. And girls, uh, what celebrities drove Jensen uh, Interceptors back in the day? I only know one, and that's Eric Morecambe, I think. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you anymore. The viewers can go and find out. Right, yeah, yeah. I've, I've started you off with Eric Morecambe. What other celebrities had Jensen Interceptors back in the day? So there we go. Now, on the weight side of things, um, I, I was a little bit surprised, let's say. But what about you guys out there? Did you think it was going to be that heavy? Or certainly, you know, I think Tim was taken aback by the fact it wasn't that far off for your Lotus. It was 100 kilos. The amount of stuff we took out was 100 kilos less than my Lotus. So that's yeah. the same as a, a car with, with fluids. Yep. So there you go. Were you shocked by that? Uh, how much weight came off this? Um, I think that'll do. Um, so stay tuned. Um, subscribe to the um, channel because we're going to be doing a series on this build as well. And hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.